Show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Proverb, navigating through life's challenges and opportunities, we often draw strength and insight from those closest to us. The people with whom we choose to surround ourselves can either propel us forward on a path of success and enlightenment, or pull us back into realms of negativity and stagnation. It is essential, then, to be discerning about the company we keep, not out of judgment, but out of a need to cultivate our best selves. In this exploration, we will identify 15 types of individuals whose tendencies may hinder your personal and professional growth. By recognizing these traits, we empower ourselves to make choices that align more closely with our values, goals, and personal well-being. The decision to say no to certain individuals is not about exclusion, but about setting boundaries that foster a healthier, more productive lifestyle. These boundaries are crucial for maintaining mental clarity and emotional stability, allowing us to focus on building relationships that are nurturing, inspiring, and supportive. As we walk through each of these types, remember that the journey to self-improvement often begins with the environment we choose and the people we allow into that environment. Thus, let us carefully consider who we let walk with us on our path, ensuring they add value and positivity to our lives, just as we strive to add to theirs. <laughs> Chapter 1. The Naysayers Naysayers are individuals whose default response to new ideas and opportunities is skepticism and doubt. They tend to focus on the potential for failure rather than the possibilities for success. In any environment, whether professional or personal, they consistently project negative outcomes, often without offering constructive alternatives. Engaging with naysayers can be particularly draining because their pessimism can contaminate an otherwise optimistic atmosphere. They have a knack for crafting an argument that highlights every conceivable barrier without acknowledging any potential benefits. This can lead teams and individuals to doubt their capabilities and possibly abandon innovative ideas prematurely. It is important, however, to recognize when caution turns into destructiveness. Naysayers often disguise their negativity as realism, claiming they are just being practical or realistic. While it is crucial to be aware of risks and to plan accordingly, there is a fine line between prudence and pessimism. When the balance tips too far towards the latter, it becomes counterproductive, stifling creativity and motivation. Moreover, the influence of naysayers can extend beyond immediate projects or ideas. Over time, their constant skepticism can erode team morale and individual self-confidence, leading to a culture of fear and conservatism, where the status quo becomes the safest bet and innovation dies. In such environments, the most talented individuals may feel undervalued and misunderstood, which can lead to disengagement or, worse, attrition. The key to dealing with naysayers effectively is not to exclude them entirely, but to limit their influence on the decision-making process. Encourage them to redirect their energy toward constructive criticism that offers real solutions, not just problems. It's also beneficial to balance their presence with more optimistic perspectives that focus on potential and practical ways to overcome obstacles. Additionally, developing a thick skin and a strong sense of conviction in your own ideas is crucial. Learn to listen to criticism without being swayed by undue pessimism. Cultivate resilience by exposing your ideas to a variety of opinions and using the feedback to strengthen rather than dismantle your plans. Ultimately, saying no to naysayers is about asserting your right to pursue your visions and goals without undue discouragement. It means building a support network that includes voices of reason and encouragement, which will help you navigate through genuine concerns and unwarranted negativity alike. By carefully managing the influence that naysayers have in your life, you protect your mental energy and maintain focus on your goals ensuring that your path forward is marked by informed optimism rather than debilitating doubt. Chapter 2. The Manipulators Manipulators are individuals who skillfully influence or control others to their advantage, 
often without regard for ethical considerations or the interests of those they manipulate. Recognizing and distancing oneself from such people is crucial as their presence can lead to significant personal and professional harm. A manipulator's toolbox is filled with tactics like guilt-tripping, gaslighting, and emotional blackmail. These strategies are designed to undermine another person's confidence and self-esteem, making them more susceptible to manipulation. For example, a manipulator might use flattery to lower someone's defenses and then coerce them into actions that serve the manipulator's ends, not the victim's. The impact of engaging with manipulators can be profound. They often create an environment where trust is undermined and genuine communication is replaced with deceit and subterfuge. In professional settings, this can lead to a toxic work culture where manipulation overrides merit, and in personal relationships, it can result in emotional abuse and long-term psychological damage. Dealing with manipulators requires a firm and clear approach. First, it's important to establish and maintain strong boundaries. Be clear about what is acceptable behavior and what is not, and enforce these boundaries consistently. When manipulators realize that their tactics are not effective with you, they often move on to easier targets. It's also vital to cultivate a strong sense of self-awareness and to trust your instincts about people. If something feels off in your interactions with someone, it may be a sign that you are being manipulated. Seeking external perspectives can also help validate your feelings and provide a more objective view of the situation. Furthermore, educating yourself about common manipulation techniques can make you better prepared to recognize and counter them. Knowledge truly is power in this context. By understanding the psychological underpinnings of manipulation, you can demystify the behavior and respond more strategically to protect your interests. Finally, it is often necessary to minimize or completely cut off contact with manipulators. In situations where avoidance is impossible, such as in the workplace, ensure that all communications are transparent and documented to prevent any misrepresentation of your words or actions. In conclusion, saying no to manipulators is about protecting your autonomy and integrity. By setting firm boundaries, staying vigilant about the tactics employed by manipulators, and choosing to distance yourself when necessary, you safeguard your well-being and preserve your ability to engage in healthy, honest relationships. Chapter 3. The Perpetual Pessimists Perpetual pessimists are those who consistently see and expect the worst in every situation. Their outlook on life is dominated by negativity, and they often share this perspective, bringing down the morale of everyone around them. While it's natural to feel pessimistic at times, constant negativity can be draining and harmful to one's mental health. Pessimists have a knack for focusing on problems rather than solutions, and their conversations are often peppered with complaints and forebodings of doom. They tend to dismiss positive news and focus disproportionately on the negative, which can skew the perception of reality for those around them. This negativity bias not only affects their own life choices, but can also demotivate others and dampen an otherwise positive environment. The impact of being around perpetual pessimists can be substantial. They can make it harder to maintain a hopeful or positive outlook and their skepticism can discourage others from taking risks or striving for better outcomes. In a work setting, this attitude can stifle innovation and impede teamwork as it undermines the collective enthusiasm necessary for successful collaboration. Dealing with perpetual pessimists requires a balanced approach. One effective strategy is to acknowledge their feelings without getting drawn into their negative mindset. This involves active listening and showing empathy, but also gently challenging their views when appropriate. For instance, when a pessimist highlights a potential problem, acknowledge the risk they've pointed out, but shift the focus towards potential solutions or positive angles. It is also helpful to set emotional boundaries. 
Protect your own mental health by limiting the amount of time you spend engaging with very negative people and be mindful of the conversation topics you choose with them. When possible, steer discussions towards more neutral or positive subjects. Encouraging a shift in perspective can sometimes help. Suggesting activities that foster positivity, such as practicing gratitude or participating in community service, can sometimes influence a pessimist's outlook by highlighting the good in their life and the world around them. However, there are instances when distancing yourself may be necessary. If someone's perpetual pessimism is significantly affecting your well-being, reducing your interaction with them or ending the relationship may be the best course of action. Remember, while you can offer support, you are not responsible for changing someone else's worldview. In summary, dealing with perpetual pessimists involves empathy and boundary setting. It's important to protect your own mental and emotional health while trying to inject a positive perspective into your interactions. Remember, while you can try to help someone see the brighter side of life, their outlook is ultimately their responsibility. Chapter 4. The Exploiters Exploiters are individuals who take advantage of others for their own gain, often without any regard for the well-being or rights of those they use. These types of people can be particularly damaging, as they often mask their true intentions with charm or feigned sincerity. Recognizing and saying no to exploiters is crucial to preserving your integrity and protecting your resources. Exploiters often look for people who are generous, empathetic, or in some cases, vulnerable, using these qualities to their advantage. They might present themselves as needy or in a crisis regularly, compelling you to offer help repeatedly. Over time, this becomes a pattern, with the exploiter contributing little to nothing in return. In professional settings, they may take credit for your hard work, manipulate you into taking on more than your fair share of tasks, or use subtle coercion to get their way. One of the first steps in dealing with exploiters is to identify the imbalance in the relationship or interaction. This requires honest reflection on what you are giving versus what you are receiving. It's important to recognize patterns of behavior that feel one-sided or where your kindness is being met consistently with self-serving responses. Once you have identified an exploiter, setting firm boundaries is essential. Clearly communicate your limits and stick to them. For example, if a colleague continuously pushes their work onto you, you might need to say, I can help you with this task this time, but in the future, I'll need you to manage your workload as I have my responsibilities to handle. Being direct and clear can discourage exploiters from targeting you as they often look for easier, less confrontational targets. Another effective strategy is to require reciprocity in your relationships. If you notice a continuous take and no give, it's reasonable to ask for something in return. This doesn't necessarily mean keeping a score, but ensuring that there is a fair exchange of value in your interactions. Exploiters tend to retreat when they realize that a relationship or situation isn't effortlessly advantageous to them. In some cases, especially when the exploitation affects your mental health, personal life, or professional growth, removing yourself from the relationship or situation may be necessary. This decision can be difficult, especially if the exploiter is a close colleague, friend, or family member. However, prioritizing your own well-being is paramount. Remember, saying no to an exploiter is not an act of selfishness. It is an act of self-respect. By refusing to be used, you protect your energy, your work, and your emotional health from being compromised. This allows you to invest in relationships and opportunities that are mutually beneficial and genuinely supportive. Chapter 5. The Drama Magnets Drama magnets are individuals who seem to live in a constant state of chaos and conflict, they draw you into their problems, making their emergencies your emergencies and often leaving you emotionally drained. The key to dealing with drama magnets is to recognize their patterns 
and distance yourself from the unnecessary turmoil they bring into your life. Drama magnets typically thrive on attention and the emotional responses of others. Their stories are often embellished with details that provoke shock or sympathy. They frequently have a new issue or conflict whenever you speak with them, and they make these issues the centerpiece of every interaction. For those who engage with them, this can create a cycle of crisis management, diverting attention from one's own life and into the endless soap opera of theirs. The first step in dealing with drama magnets is to recognize when someone consistently brings a disproportionate amount of drama to your doorstep. It's important to ask yourself, are these crises genuine or are they a pattern designed to capture attention and sympathy? Recognizing this pattern can help you decide how deeply you want to be involved. When you identify a drama magnet, it's helpful to set emotional and conversational boundaries. For instance, you might limit the time you spend discussing their latest crisis and steer conversations towards more neutral topics. It's also effective to respond with less emotional intensity than they expect. By not feeding the drama, you decrease the reward for them and they are likely to seek a more responsive audience. Furthermore, encourage solutions rather than simply sympathizing with their plight. Drama magnets often aren't looking for solutions, preferring to wallow in their troubles as a way of gaining attention. By focusing on solutions, you signal that your interactions are not just emotional dumping grounds, but constructive conversations. In some cases, reducing contact with drama magnets is necessary, especially if they resist boundaries or continue to drain your emotional resources. While it may feel harsh, remember that your primary responsibility is to your well-being. Engaging in constant drama can detract significantly from your mental health and distract you from focusing on your own life's goals and relationships. Ultimately, saying no to drama magnets allows you to conserve emotional energy and maintain your peace. It helps cultivate relationships that are reciprocal and grounded in reality, rather than being one-sided and fraught with continual upheaval. By doing so, you invest in your own health and happiness, prioritizing interactions that bring positivity and growth. Chapter 6. The Pessimists Pessimists are individuals who consistently see the glass as half empty. Their outlook on life is dominated by a sense of negativity and doom, which can be draining for those around them. Engaging with pessimists often means battling a barrage of negative thoughts and gloomy predictions which can sap your energy and dampen your spirits. The hallmark of a pessimist is not just a temporary inclination towards seeing the downside, but a habitual and pervasive pattern of thinking that influences all their interactions and decisions. They tend to focus on what could go wrong rather than what might go right. And this attitude can be contagious, potentially leading you to doubt your own plans and aspirations. To effectively deal with pessimists, it's crucial to recognize their impact on your mood and outlook. Consistently absorbing their negative perspectives can unconsciously align your thinking with theirs, leading you to view challenges as insurmountable or to expect failure rather than success. When interacting with a pessimist, strive to maintain a balanced perspective. This involves acknowledging the potential negatives they point out without letting these overshadow the possible positives. It's helpful to counter their pessimism with realism, not necessarily unfounded optimism. For instance, when they predict failure, you might acknowledge the risk while also discussing strategies to mitigate it and reasons the endeavor could succeed. Setting emotional boundaries is also vital. Decide how much negative input you're willing to accept before it affects your well-being. It might be necessary to limit your exposure to particularly gloomy individuals or to have straightforward conversations about how their negativity impacts you. Encouraging a shift in focus can also be beneficial. This could involve pointing out when conversations veer into negativity unnecessarily and guiding them towards more balanced or constructive topics. However, be prepared for resistance, as pessimists often have a deep-rooted habit of negative thinking. 
If the relationship proves too detrimental to your positivity and mental health, reducing contact might be the best course of action. It's important to surround yourself with people who uplift you and encourage you to pursue your goals with hope and determination. Ultimately, learning to say no to constant negativity and managing your interactions with pessimists allows you to protect your mental space and maintain an outlook that supports your personal and professional growth. This chapter guides you through understanding and navigating the challenges of interacting with pessimists, ensuring you keep your own perspective healthy and forward-looking. Chapter 7. The Gossip Mongers Gossip mongers are individuals who thrive on spreading rumors and discussing the private affairs of others. Their conversations often revolve around the misfortunes or mistakes of people within their community or social circle. Engaging regularly with gossip mongers can lead to a toxic environment where trust is scarce and relationships are superficial. The primary characteristic of gossip mongers is their penchant for sharing unverified or embellished information that can harm reputations and relationships. They often use gossip as a tool to feel more connected or important in social settings, but this behavior can quickly sour friendships and professional relationships, fostering an atmosphere of skepticism and paranoia. Dealing with gossip mongers requires a clear and firm approach. It's important to avoid participating in or encouraging gossip. This can mean changing the subject when a conversation turns to gossip or explicitly stating your discomfort with discussing others' private matters. By not engaging, you set a personal boundary and signal to others that such topics are not welcome in your interactions. Another effective strategy is to question the purpose of the gossip. Asking why it's important to share such information can prompt a gossip monger to reflect on the impact of their words and possibly reconsider their behavior. This tactic can be particularly effective in a group setting where peer pressure can deter gossip. Additionally, promoting a positive discussion culture in your social and professional circles can help minimize gossip. This involves encouraging open, supportive, and constructive communication, where the focus is on ideas, events, and personal experiences, rather than on judging others. However, if an individual continues to engage in harmful gossip despite your efforts to steer conversations differently, it may be necessary to distance yourself from them. Limiting your interaction can protect you from the negative effects of their behavior and preserve your peace of mind and reputation. In this chapter, we explore techniques to effectively deal with gossip mongers, emphasizing the importance of maintaining a healthy social environment and protecting yourself from the potential damages of unchecked gossip. By fostering a culture of respect and positivity, you can help deter destructive gossip and build more meaningful and trusting relationships. Chapter 8 The Perpetual Victims Perpetual victims are individuals who habitually see themselves as the target of external circumstances or other people's actions without acknowledging their own role in their situations. This mindset can be draining for those around them as it often involves a continuous loop of complaints and excuses without taking personal responsibility or action to change their circumstances. The primary trait of perpetual victims is their refusal to see how their own choices contribute to their problems. They often externalize blame, attributing their failures and unhappiness to factors outside their control. This not only stymies their personal growth, but also places a heavy emotional burden on their relationships, as they frequently seek sympathy and assistance without making efforts to improve their situation. Dealing with perpetual victims requires a balance of empathy and firmness. While it's important to show understanding and support, it's equally crucial to avoid enabling their victim mentality. One effective approach is to gently encourage them to see how they might be contributing to their own difficulties and to consider changes they could make. Offering constructive feedback and suggesting actionable steps 
can help shift their perspective from passive to proactive. Another strategy is to set clear boundaries. It's essential to communicate your limits regarding how much negativity or complaint you can tolerate, letting them know that while you are available to help, you expect them to also take steps towards self-improvement can minimize emotional drainage and foster a healthier dynamic. Promoting a mindset of empowerment in your interactions can also be beneficial. This involves highlighting stories or examples where individuals faced similar challenges and overcame them through personal effort and resilience. Such narratives can inspire perpetual victims to view their situations as surmountable and within their control to change. However, if an individual persists in their victim mentality despite your efforts to support and encourage personal responsibility, it may be necessary to distance yourself to preserve your own emotional well-being. Continuing to engage with someone who refuses to accept any responsibility for their circumstances can be mentally and emotionally exhausting. In this chapter, we delve into strategies for effectively interacting with perpetual victims while protecting your own psychological health. By fostering an environment that encourages responsibility and self-efficacy, you can help others move away from a victim mentality towards a more empowered and active approach to life's challenges. Chapter 9. The Overly Critical Overly critical people are those who have a penchant for harsh judgments and negative feedback. They focus on finding faults and rarely offer constructive criticism or positive reinforcement. This relentless negativity can be profoundly damaging to relationships and personal well-being, making it essential to manage interactions with such individuals carefully. The defining characteristic of overly critical people is their focus on what's wrong rather than what's right. This tendency can stem from various sources, including their own insecurities, a need to control, or a skewed perception of helping others improve. Regardless of the cause, their constant criticism can erode self-esteem and dampen enthusiasm, making it challenging to maintain a positive outlook or feel confident in one's abilities. When dealing with overly critical people, it's important to differentiate between useful constructive criticism and mere negativity. Constructive criticism is aimed at improvement and is usually delivered with some level of empathy or understanding. In contrast, overly critical feedback often lacks a basis in genuine concern for the other's growth and can feel demeaning or unnecessarily harsh. One effective strategy for managing overly critical people is to set clear boundaries about acceptable communication. Be upfront about how their words affect you and insist on a respectful tone if the relationship is to continue. This may involve explicitly stating that while you welcome helpful suggestions, constant negativity will not be tolerated. Another approach is to not take their words personally. Often, the criticisms from such individuals are a reflection of their own issues and not an accurate assessment of your character or abilities. Keeping this perspective can help you maintain emotional distance and prevent their negativity from impacting your self-esteem. Moreover, seek feedback from multiple sources. If you find yourself frequently criticized by one person, balancing their perspectives with others can provide a more rounded view of your capabilities and areas for improvement. This broader feedback can help you identify when criticisms are unwarranted and reinforce your confidence in your own skills and decisions. If the situation does not improve despite setting boundaries and adjusting your perspective, it may be necessary to limit your exposure to this person. Protecting your mental health and well-being is paramount, and removing yourself from relentlessly negative environments is a valid and necessary response. In this chapter, we explore methods to handle interactions with overly critical people effectively, emphasizing the importance of boundaries, the value of varied feedback, and the necessity of sometimes stepping back to preserve one's mental health. These strategies aim to empower you to maintain your confidence and positivity in the face 
of undue criticism. Chapter 10. The Gossip Monger Gossip mongers are individuals who indulge in spreading rumors and sharing private information about others, often without concern for the truth or the consequences. Engaging in gossip can seem harmless or even entertaining, but it breeds mistrust and can destroy relationships and reputations. Saying no to gossip mongers is crucial for maintaining a healthy and respectful social or professional environment. The primary trait of gossip mongers is their need to share information that is not theirs to share, often for personal gain, or to feel a sense of inclusion in social groups. They thrive on the reactions of their audience, using gossip as a tool to manipulate social dynamics or gain attention. However, the ripple effects of their actions can be damaging, creating conflicts and eroding trust among individuals. When dealing with gossip mongers, the best defense is a strong stance against participating in gossip. Make it clear that you prefer to discuss ideas or events rather than people and redirect conversations toward more constructive topics when possible. This not only shields you from being involved in potentially harmful discussions, but also sets a standard for the type of interactions you expect in your presence. Another effective approach is to question the purpose of the gossip. Asking simple questions like, how do you know this, or why are we talking about this, can challenge the gossip monger to reconsider their motivations and the impact of their words. Often, bringing attention to the nature of the conversation can dissuade them from continuing in this vein. It is also helpful to be a role model of discretion and integrity. By demonstrating that you do not condone or participate in gossip, you influence others around you. This can help create a culture of respect and confidentiality, particularly in workplaces or in close-knit communities where trust is fundamental to effective collaboration and personal connections. However, if the behavior persists, it may be necessary to distance yourself from the gossip monger. Limiting your interactions with individuals who habitually spread rumors protects your mental health and safeguards your reputation in professional settings, it may also be appropriate to report such behavior to human resources or management if it disrupts the workplace or violates policies on conduct and respect. In this chapter, we discuss strategies to effectively handle interactions with gossip mongers and the importance of promoting a positive, gossip-free environment. By standing firm against the allure of gossip, asking critical questions, and leading by example, you can minimize the negative impact of gossip mongers in your life and contribute to a more supportive and trustworthy community. Chapter 11. The Flatterer. Flatterers are individuals who use excessive and insincere praise to gain favor or manipulate others. While genuine compliments are a part of normal social interactions, flatterers often have ulterior motives such as seeking to influence or exploit for personal benefit. Recognizing and distancing yourself from flatterers is crucial to maintain genuine relationships and avoid being manipulated. The primary characteristic of a flatterer is their strategic deployment of compliments to curry favor rather than to offer genuine praise. They often target those in positions of power or those from whom they want something. Using flattery as a tool to lower defenses and create a sense of indebtedness. Flatterers are adept at reading people and situations to deliver the most impactful praise. One effective way to deal with flatterers is to question the sincerity of their compliments. If the praise seems disproportionate or out of context, it's likely not genuine. Politely acknowledging the compliment, but maintaining a professional distance, can help prevent flatterers from becoming too familiar or influencing your decisions unduly. Another strategy is to observe their behavior with others. Flatterers often change their approach based on their audience, tailoring their compliments to what they think each person wants to hear. Noticing this pattern can be a clear indicator of their lack of sincerity and reliability. Setting clear boundaries is also important when dealing with flatterers. Make it known that while you appreciate positive feedback, 
you value honesty and integrity more. Encouraging an environment where constructive criticism is welcomed and valued can deter flatterers from using insincere praise as a tactic. Additionally, focus on fostering a culture of authenticity, both in personal and professional settings. By promoting values like honesty, transparency, and genuine interactions, you can minimize the impact of flattery and encourage more meaningful and truthful exchanges. In professional settings, it's particularly important to be wary of flatterers as they can disrupt team dynamics and create a false sense of security. Leaders should emphasize the importance of merit-based recognition and ensure that all team members feel valued for their actual contributions rather than their ability to flatter. This chapter discusses strategies to recognize, manage, and discourage flattery, fostering environments that prioritize genuine and constructive interactions. By understanding the motives behind excessive praise and setting appropriate boundaries, you can protect yourself from manipulation and promote a culture of authenticity and mutual respect. Chapter 12. The Perpetual Skeptic Perpetual skeptics are individuals who habitually doubt or question motives, actions and truths, often without a substantial basis. Their persistent skepticism can undermine trust, dampen enthusiasm and stall progress in both personal and professional settings. Learning to identify and effectively interact with perpetual skeptics can help preserve your mental energy and maintain constructive relationships. A perpetual skeptic often challenges ideas or plans systematically, sometimes out of a genuine desire for thoroughness, but often due to an underlying fear of change or deep-seated distrust. While skepticism can be healthy in moderation, as it promotes critical thinking and due diligence in excess, it becomes a barrier to growth and innovation. To manage relationships with perpetual skeptics effectively, it's crucial to address their concerns directly. Providing clear, logical explanations and evidence can sometimes alleviate their doubts. When presenting ideas or proposals, anticipate potential questions or objections they might raise and prepare reasoned responses in advance. It's also helpful to engage skeptics in the decision-making process. By involving them actively and asking for their input, you can sometimes mitigate their skepticism by making them part of the solution. This involvement must be handled carefully to ensure it's constructive and doesn't allow the skeptic to derail projects with constant questioning. Setting boundaries is key. It's important to recognize when skepticism turns into obstruction. In such cases, it might be necessary to assertively set limits on the extent of their challenges, especially when they hinder progress. Communicating the need for trust and constructive feedback within a team can help set the tone for more positive interactions. Another strategy is to encourage a shift in perspective by highlighting the benefits of optimism and trust. Discussing historical successes or instances where taking calculated risks paid off can demonstrate the value of sometimes stepping forward with faith in positive outcomes. Lastly, if skepticism seems rooted in past negative experiences or a lack of confidence, offering support or resources for professional development may help address these underlying issues. Encouraging engagement in workshops or training that enhance decision-making confidence and risk assessment skills could temper their compulsive doubt. This chapter outlines methods to constructively engage with perpetual skeptics balancing the need for critical analysis with the importance of moving forward with decisiveness and trust. By understanding their motivations and incorporating them positively into workflows, you can mitigate either disruptive aspects of their skepticism while leveraging their critical eye to enhance their project robustness. Chapter 13. The Constant Complainer the constant complainer is a type of person who seems never to be satisfied with anything, always finding something to criticize or lament. This negativity can be draining and demoralizing, affecting the morale of entire groups. 
and impeding personal and collective growth. Learning to recognize and skillfully manage interactions with constant complainers can help maintain a positive atmosphere and encourage constructive problem solving. Constant complainers often focus on problems rather than solutions, getting stuck in a loop of negativity that overshadows any positive aspects or potential opportunities for improvement. Their persistent grievances can create a toxic environment where cynicism replaces optimism and dissatisfaction becomes the norm. To effectively deal with constant complainers, it's important to first listen and acknowledge their concerns. Often, people who complain feel unheard. Acknowledging their feelings can sometimes reduce the intensity of their complaints. However, it's crucial to avoid getting drawn into a spiral of negativity. Instead, Gently steer conversations towards potential solutions or positive aspects. Setting clear boundaries is also essential. While it's important to be empathetic, it's equally necessary to let the complainer know that constant negativity will not be entertained indefinitely. Encourage them to bring up issues along with potential solutions or to focus on one problem at a time and discuss it constructively. Another strategy involves encouraging a shift in perspective by pointing out positive outcomes and highlighting successes, no matter how small. This can sometimes help break the cycle of negativity by refocusing attention on what is working well. Providing training or resources on positive communication and problem solving can also help. Workshops or courses on these topics might give complainers the tools they need to express their concerns more constructively and work towards resolutions rather than simply airing grievances. Additionally, fostering a culture of gratitude can counterbalance negativity. Initiatives like sharing success stories, acknowledging team and individual achievements, and promoting acts of kindness can cultivate a more positive environment. This chapter details strategies for managing the constant complainer in a way that minimizes their negative impact while also offering them avenues to express themselves more positively. By encouraging solution-focused dialogue, acknowledging and addressing legitimate issues, and fostering an atmosphere of positivity and gratitude, you can help transform chronic complaining into meaningful contributions. Chapter 14 the Unreliable Committer The Unreliable Committer is characterized by their consistent pattern of failing to follow through on promises and commitments. This type of person can disrupt plans, cause repeated frustrations, and undermine trust within relationships, both personal and professional. Recognizing and addressing the behavior of unreliable committers is crucial for maintaining functional and trustworthy dynamics. Unreliable committers often overpromise and underdeliver, either because they want to please others or because they fail to realistically assess their own capacity and limitations. This behavior can lead to a cycle of disappointment and mistrust as they repeatedly fail to meet the expectations they have set. To effectively deal with an unreliable committer, it's important to establish clear and open communication, discuss the importance of reliability and how their actions affect others. Setting explicit expectations and deadlines can help, as can requiring regular updates on progress, which may encourage them to stay on task and be more accountable. Another approach is to limit their responsibilities initially. Giving them smaller tasks or commitments that they can handle may help build their confidence and track record of reliability. As they demonstrate more consistency, they can gradually be entrusted with more significant responsibilities. It's also helpful to understand the reasons behind their unreliability. Some individuals might struggle with organization skills, time management or prioritization. In such cases, offering support, resources or training in these areas could be beneficial. For instance, a simple tool like a planner or digital reminders can make a big difference for someone who struggles with time management. Creating a system of accountability can also be effective. 
This might involve implementing more structured check-ins or pairing them with a more reliable partner who can help keep them on track. Positive reinforcement when they do meet commitments can reinforce good behavior and encourage continuation. Additionally, it's crucial to prepare for potential setbacks when dealing with an unreliable committer. Having backup plans and not relying solely on their promises can help mitigate the impact of their unreliability on projects and plans. This chapter provides practical advice on how to work constructively with unreliable committers, aiming to improve their reliability while also safeguarding the integrity of team projects and personal plans. By addressing the root causes of their behavior and setting up structures to support their improvement, it's possible to transform unreliability into dependable participation. Chapter 15. The Eternal Pessimist Encounters with the eternal pessimist are often draining. This type of person sees the glass as perpetually half-empty and rarely has anything positive to contribute. Their worldview is shaped by a deep-seated belief that things will go wrong, no matter what. Engaging with them can be a challenge, as their negativity can dampen even the most optimistic atmosphere. The eternal pessimist tends to focus on potential pitfalls in every situation, which can be contagious and demoralizing. They often dismiss positive news, focusing instead on aspects that confirm their gloomy outlook. This negativity can stifle creativity and impede proactive problem-solving, as they are more concerned with what could go wrong than with how things could potentially go right. When dealing with an eternal pessimist, it's essential to guard your own mindset. Exposure to constant negativity can unconsciously influence your perspective leading to increased stress and a diminished sense of possibility. While it's important to be realistic and prepare for potential challenges, balancing this with a positive outlook is crucial for personal and professional growth. To maintain your equilibrium, limit your interactions with the eternal pessimist when possible. When engagement is necessary, counter their negativity by highlighting positive aspects and potential solutions. Encouraging them to consider different perspectives can sometimes help, but often preserving your energy and focusing on more positive interactions is the best strategy. In the end, navigating relationships with different types of people is an ongoing journey. While it's essential to recognize and set boundaries with those who drain our energy or negatively impact our lives, it's equally important to cultivate relationships with individuals who uplift and inspire us. Remember, saying no to toxic behaviors or personalities is not a rejection of the person themselves, but rather a prioritization of your own well-being and growth. By surrounding yourself with positive influences and maintaining healthy boundaries, you create space for personal development and fulfillment. As we conclude our exploration of the 15 types of people to always say no to, let us carry forward the lessons learned and apply them to our daily interactions. May we cultivate relationships that bring out the best in us and empower us to thrive in every aspect of our lives. 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 Every aspect of our lives.